So it's 11. I woke up about an hour ago. I decided to just not go to lecture because I was a little tired when I woke up and I was like, you know what? One day, I've gone to every other day. Let me just skip this day. So I'm skipping it. But now I feel bad because a lot of the good professors were teaching today. I missed it. So that kind of sucks, but it's okay. I'll just watch the recording, I guess. So I'm going to get through day one and I'm going to get through my project and I'm going to try to get through the true learn quiz and that'll be it. And then if I do anything else, that's extra. That's the plan. Okay, so we're picking up Mario. Oh, I didn't unlock the door. So we have the first real meal of the day at uh, about 7.40. Extremely lazy day, extremely. We are about to finish day one, but it's been a bad day. We didn't really do much. Uh, very lazy, but the day's not over. So I'm gonna go feed the fish. So, I don't know. I think my productivity just gets destroyed when I don't go to the lecture, when I don't go to lecture. I was looking forward to lecture so much today because it had all my favorite professors, but I have this bad habit of just not sleeping early enough. I'm, a, I'm a, like a late, I'm kind of a night owl. So having classes at 8 a.m. is really not for me, but um, you know, you just gotta do it, I guess. Like if we had our first class at 10 or 11, I would be, I'd be in love because then I could wake up at like, or then I could go to bed at like 12 or one, but sadly that's not the case. Um, so I just gotta go to bed earlier and all that. So I'm gonna go to class tomorrow 100%. I'm not gonna be late. I'm gonna show up on time. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I didn't swim today. I didn't really do much of anything, but I'm gonna do a little home workout and I'm gonna eat and yeah, we're just gonna keep on studying. I might have a student tonight, so we'll do that too. See you guys. So as you can see, I just took a shower. This will be the thumbnail. <sighs> Not too great of a day. Uh, didn't get the most done. I feel like when I stay home, like I said before, I just don't get much done. So tomorrow I'm going there. I'm gonna try to get a, as close to seven hours as I can. Gotta head to bed soon. Uh, no content for today, but uh, I'll show you guys very quickly what we went over. I just can't get into like what happened because I wasn't there. So yeah, just flossing, gonna brush and I'm gonna go to bed. So really quick, we're just gonna talk about what we went over in class today. We talked about these viruses. So I guess, because uh, I know herpes virus is one that's permanent. So I'm, I'm guessing that a lot of these viruses might be like latent type in viruses, latent type in, type viruses. Sorry, I have my Invisalign in. Um, so yeah, these are the outlines. These are the three viruses we're gonna talk about. And just really quick, um, so herpes virus is actually one that is latent and it's latent inside your neurons. And there's a lot of different types of herpes viruses. So key things about it is that it has a double-stranded DNA genome. So very similar actually to what we have because we also have double-stranded DNA, which I thought was interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I think that one of the things that caught my attention was the fact that it lives in the neuron, which is a very weird, in my opinion, place for a virus to live. But you know, viruses do what they gotta do to live. Next, we talked about HIV and retrovirus. So retrovirus, this is not talking about, oh, it's in the 1980s. I mean, HIV was kind of discovered around that time. But no, that's not what actually it means. It means that it has RNA, ribonucleic acid, which turns into DNA, which then gets incorporated into the host. Now it's called retro because normally it's DNA turns into RNA. That's what we normally see, but that's not what happens. It's this process right here. And that's why one of the reasons why HIV can be permanent is because it incorporates its DNA into the host. So the outlines. So let's look a little bit into this process. So, are, yeah, they, ha they have RNA in the virus. Like when the virus actually gets into the human, it's RNA. However, however, it has a way of replication where it makes this DNA intermediate, which then gets into your own genome. Look at this. The, virals, the viral genome DNA is integrated into the host chromosome. 
and that can prevent that can present a lot of problems because it's sort of hiding from your immune system. Um, I don't really think there was much that I wanted to say here. Um, yeah, in 1981 it was discovered. That's not why it's called retro. It's called retro because of its mechanism of action. And so, if you think about it, humans throughout the ages in like the year 1000 may have gotten infected by a virus and their DNA may have changed a little. They pass that on to their, to their offspring, 1100, and then maybe another virus came along Maybe another virus came along and, and made him even more viral. And then it just goes on and on and on. So viruses can keep infecting us and it is heritable a lot some of the time. It's heritable. And that's why viruses that are just kind of in our DNA make up a large portion of the chromosome, 8%. And actually it's been seen that if we delete these viral portions that we would think are junk, we actually have issues. Um... So that, that's pretty interesting. And we're just going to talk about one last thing. We're going to talk about the pharmacology of everything. Now, I'm not going to lie. I have no idea how any of this works. I haven't read any of it or watched it. But uh, pharmacology, HIV infection and AIDS. There's a lot of drugs that can help limit uh, HIV getting to AIDS. Uh, but I haven't learned about it. So once I do, maybe I'll tell you guys a little about it. So have a good night.